I am Adil Kumar. Welcome to this video on converting nonlinear equations to linear form. It is an excellent application since you know most of the cases there are relations which are nonlinear in nature. Nonlinear could be very difficult to interpret, but writing them in linear form makes it easier to analyze. So this application is very beneficial in many ways. Let us see how to work with few basic equations so that you can easily do similar examples. The equation here is to convert following nonlinear equations into the form y equals to mx plus c where a and b are constants. So in these equations a and b are constants. State what the variable capital X and capital Y and the constants M and C represent. So when you convert them to the linear form, capital Y equals to M capital X plus C, which is a linear form, you need to explain what is capital Y, the dependent variable, and what is capital X, the independent variable, correct? So to begin with, we have taken A and B as simple examples where I will directly give you the form and then we'll take up C and D where we need to work with the equation to convert into the linear form, correct? The very first equation here is that of a parabola. So we are writing here y equals to ax square plus b. Now, that really means that if I'm going to sketch this parabola on a graph, uh, on a coordinate plane, then the graph will be kind of like this, right? Assuming B to be positive, we'll get a graph like this, where B is the y-intercept, correct? We are assuming A and B to be positive, right? Now, which is definitely a nonlinear curve. Now, if I kind of modify this, and instead of sketching a graph, which is for x versus y, if I change my coordinate plane to a different set of values, that is to say, if I write capital Y and capital X, where if you compare with this equation, we'll keep capital Y as same as this Y value. However, the X value will be for us X square. That is to say, if I, instead of writing X, if I write X square here, correct? And then, if I'm going to plot Y equals to AX plus B, where x is equals to x square, right? And capital Y is same as the lowercase y. Then what do you expect? Well, in that case, if this happens, in that case, we are going to get a line here, right? A straight line. Since on the horizontal axis, we have x square. So I have replaced this x square by capital X. Do you see that? I've maintained the same y, writing now as capital Y, A plus B. So we get a graph as shown here, and definitely this is a linear graph of the same equation. However, there is a major change. Now, so with this example, I hope the concept is clear, right? So we had a parabola, quadratic equation. If we change the value on the x coordinate, make it instead of x, x square, and keep y on y axis, then we actually get a straight line, right? So that is what we are going to do with all the four equations one by one. Now what I like you to do is apply the same principle and do part B. So you can pause the video, do part B, and then look into my solution. Here is a short solution to part B now. So we have this equation y equals to a square root of x over b, right? 
Now, I could actually rewrite this equation as y equals to a over square root b and then keep square root x separate. Now, this equation can also be written as capital Y equals to A over square root B times capital X, where now capital Y is equal to lowercase y and capital X is square root of X. Do you see that? Now, this is the form which is capital Y equals to MX plus C, where C equals to 0. Right. So that's a direct variation. So as you can see now that if I plot the on the x-axis, if I plot square root of x and capital Y here, which is equal to lowercase y, in that case, I will actually get a straight line going through the origin like this. Correct? Now since the value of x is within the square root, we do have a restriction here that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Is that okay? So that is what you get. And slope m of this line is going to be a over square root b. Correct? So that is going to be the slope of this particular line as shown in this particular equation. Perfect. Now, can you tell me the slope on the line which we did for y equals to ax square plus b? Well, here the slope will remain as a, right? And the intercept c will now be equal to b, right? So, it will be the same intercept as in the quadratic form. So, you can clearly see here that it is not very difficult to convert nonlinear equations to a linear form. Right. Most of them can be directly related to capital Y equals to MX plus C, where Y and X values could have some other value. Right Now, it is kind of important to understand that Y should be purely written in terms of X and Y. X also should be purely written in terms of X and Y, not A, B, the constants. Right. So that is kind of important to note. Okay, now let's take the part C and D and see how to convert these equations which cannot be directly written into this form, right? So let's take a new fresh page to discuss. Now we have a nonlinear equation which is y equals to ax plus b over x. To write it in linear form, we need to write a function in x and y and keep the constants away. So what I could do here is I could times everything by x, right? So in that case, we get y times x equals to ax square plus b. So, so at this stage, I multiplied both sides by x. So times x, both sides. Now, once I do that, I could rewrite the given equation in the form capital Y equals to A times capital X plus C. Now, that becomes the linear form. So, this is our linear form. Do you see that? So, in just one step, we have done conversion from a nonlinear form to linear form. So in this linear form, what is the interpretation for y and x? So, so in this case, on the x-axis, we are actually sketching x square, right? And on the y-axis, we are sketching y times x. And what we get here is a straight line with slope of a and y-intercept of c. So, which will be kind of like this, right? So, so here the slope m will be equal to a as in the original equation and the y-intercept b will be the same as the value in c. You get the idea. So, in doing so, 
we have actually converted the nonlinear form to a linear form. Correct? Does it make sense to you? Right? Well, there are more than one ways of doing this. Let's do an alternate method. So here is alternate solution. Beginning with the equation which is given to us as ax plus b over x, we need to have one term with x, the other term with the constant. So what we could also do is divide by x both sides. In that case, we get y over x equals to a, x and x cancel, plus b over x squared. Now this equation could be rearranged and we could write this as b over x square plus a or capital Y equals to, let me write this as b as m, right, capital X plus c. Now if I write like this, in that case clearly we have capital Y which is equals to lowercase y over x, m is equal to b for us and c is equal to a correct and the value of capital x let me write here will be 1 over x square now that means what should you plot to get a straight line we should plot on the x-axis 1 over x square right and on the y-axis original y over x then we are going to get a straight line whose slope m is going to be equal to the value b in the original equation, right? And the y-intercept c is going to be the original value a in this equation, right? Correct? So, that is how we can linearize the given nonlinear equation. So I hope the concept is clear. So once again, it is, whenever you write this, you have to ensure that the value of y or x does not involve constants a and b, right? So, so that means you have to isolate so that the constants are not part of capital Y or X. Is it clear? Once you do that, then we have performed the linearization. That's the key, right? So that is a note which is very important to understand. Perfect. So, so I hope that makes sense. Now, let's take a small break and then we are going to continue with the last example here, which is an exponential equation. I hope it makes sense. So I hope you enjoyed the break. It is really beautiful out there these days. A lot of birds have migrated and it's real fun being with nature. Now with fresh mind, let's continue. So here is the last example. We need to convert exponential equation y equals to a e to the power of minus bx to linear form. So let us first look into the equation which we have 
the graph of this curve will be what? It is exponential decay, right? Kind of like this. And um, we can write on the axis y and x values, correct? So that is how it is going to be. Now, in case uh, x is equal to 0, then what we get here is a times 1. So this value is a for us. Now, how do we convert this to linear form? Well, the best thing to do whenever you are working with e, the exponential equations with e, you can take natural log both sides, right? Both sides. So that helps. So let's rewrite the equation, which is y equals to a e to the power of minus bx. So when you take natural log both sides, we get ln a e to the power of minus bx. Now, using properties of logarithms, we get some of these, right? So we get ln a plus ln e to the power of minus bx. Now we'll apply the power rule here. So we get ln y equals to ln a minus b ln e to the power of x. Now ln e is reciprocal of one another. So we get ln y equals to ln a minus bx. So we do have x and y terms. So we can rewrite this as ln y equals to minus bx plus ln a. Now, in this equation, the first term here is treated as capital Y minus B as slope M, that as modified X value, and this becomes your C value. Do you see that? So, that is how we could easily convert. Now, let's compare these two equations. Let's rewrite them. So, we have ln Y equals to minus BX plus ln A which we are writing as capital Y equals to M capital X plus C. That is the linear form. So here, capital Y for us is ln Y, capital X is same as X, slope M will now be minus P, and the Y intercept C is going to be ln A, right? So that is how it is going to be, right? Okay. So, so now if you sketch the graph of uh, x versus ln y, right, that would be a capital Y, you will actually get a straight line with slope of minus b, right, assuming a, b are positive, so the slope will be something like this, right, so we'll just approximately sketch one, so, so that is what it is where the y intercept will now be ln a, right? And the slope m will be minus p. So that will be a linearization of your nonlinear graph. Do you see that part? Now, this is extremely useful application. Many growth and decay equations could be solved by linearization. And then we can interpolate or extrapolate data to get added information. So I hope you see the power of this application. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. I will also connect you with uh, some videos on approximations and linearizations, which will give you in-depth uh, information and knowledge on this topic. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching and all the best.